Section 2.5b deals with acids and bases and how to actually calculate the pH values. In the next couple of slides, we're going to learn how to calculate the pH value. pH stands for power of the hydrogen, and pH scales are logarithmic scales where you're going to use the base of 10. Below, you will see two very important equations. pH is equal to the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration. The brackets represent molarity. And then hydronium ion concentration is equal to the inverse log of pH, which would be represented as 10 raised to the negative pH value. Look at the graph below you will see that there is an inverse relationship between hydronium ion concentration and pH. As the pH value increases, you will see that the hydronium ion concentration decreases. So what does a log scale really mean? Well, every change of 1 in pH shows a change of 10 times, a factor of 10 in concentration of hydronium ions. If we take a look at the chart below, remember that a pH of 1 will have more hydrogen ions than a pH of 4. If we take a look at the difference between a pH of 1 and a pH of 2, that is a change of 1, so we would say that a pH of 1 is 10 times more acidic. If we take a look at the difference between the pH of 3 and 1, that would be a difference of 2, 10 to the second is 100 times. So a pH of 1 is 100 times more acidic than pH of 3. And if we take a look at the last example, where we compare 4 to 1, that is a difference of 3, and 10 to the third is 1,000. So a pH of 1 is 1,000 times more acidic, has 1,000 times more hydrogen ions than a pH of 4. Let's try this example out. The pH of a solution changes from 5 to 3. Did it increase or decrease in hydrogen ion concentration, and by what factor did it change? Well, we know as we decrease in pH, we're becoming more acidic. And when we become more acidic, that's going to increase the number of hydrogen ions. Well, what factor did it change by? Well, we know 5 minus 3 is a difference of 2, and we know that every unit change of 1 is 10 times, so 10 to the second would be 100 times. All right, so let's take a look at some examples that you will need to be able to do. The first is finding the pH when given the hydronium ion concentration. Remember the equation from earlier, pH is equal to the negative log of the hydrogen ion or the hydronium ion concentration. In this example, they're giving you that value, so you're just going to plug this in to the equation, and then you're going to use your calculator to solve. So take out your calculator, push the negative sign, and then find the button on your calculator that says log. Press that, and then enter 1.0 E negative 8. Press enter, and you should get a value of 8.00. You might be wondering why I put a double zero on the end. Well, significant figures in logs are a little different than normal numbers. Because the hydrogen ion concentration has two sig figs, we always make sure that the pH value has two sig figs to the right of a decimal point, in this case, 0, 0. In this next example, we're going to do the reverse of what we just did. Now I'm giving you the pH, and you need to find the hydronium ion concentration. So going back a couple of slides ago, you will remember that you saw that the hydronium ion concentration can be solved by taking 10 and raising it to the negative pH value. In this case, the pH is 5, so we're going to take 10 to the negative fifth. You'll put that into your calculator, and your calculator will give you 1 times 10 to the negative fifth. Of course, this is molarity because we're working in concentration. Your calculator might also give you 0 0.00001 m, 
don't forget that those two numbers are the same. This is in scientific notation, this is in ordinary notation. Before we do any other calculation, we need to talk about what autoionization of water is. Naturally, water molecules will collide with each other, and probably once out of every couple million collisions, you will get two water molecules to split into the hydronium and the hydroxide ion. This is called autoionization. That is why pure water is considered neutral. There is the same amount of hydronium ions as there are hydroxide ions floating around. This occurs at 25 degrees Celsius. It makes this statement true, that hydronium ions and hydroxide ions, when multiplied together, will always have a product of 1 times 10 to the negative 14 molarity squared. Now this is called Kw. It is the equilibrium constant for water. And you just need to know that it is a constant and that it is provided to you on your reference sheet. So let's look at hydrogen ion concentration values. For an acid, which would have a pH of less than 7, the hydrogen ion concentration must be greater than the hydroxide ion concentration. The hydrogen ion concentration will also be greater than 1 times 10 to the negative 7th molarity. An example of this would be when a hydrogen ion concentration is equivalent to 1 times 10 to the negative third in molarity. For a base, the pH will be greater than 7, and the hydrogen ion concentration will be less than the hydroxide ion concentration. The hydrogen ion concentration will be less than 1 times 10 to the negative 7th. An example of this would be something like 1 times 10 to the negative 11th in molarity. And if your solution is neutral, the hydrogen and the hydroxide ion concentration will equal to each other, and a pH of 7 will exist. This slide shows you the equations that you will use to calculate pOH. You'll notice that these equations are very similar to the ones that we use to calculate pH. The only difference is the introduction of the hydroxide ion. At the bottom, there's a very important equation that we will use later on, and this relates pH values to pOH values. All the equations that I've showed you thus far are on your reference sheet. So let's take a look at this example. It says find the pOH if the concentration of the hydroxide ion is 1 times 10 to the negative fifth. So we know that pOH is equal to the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. So since they've given me the hydroxide ion concentration, I'm going to substitute that number in, and I'm going to use my calculator like before. I'm going to put the negative button in, I'm going to press the log button, I'm going to type in 1 e negative 5, and I will end up getting 5.00 as my answer. Remember again that however many sig figs you have in your concentration, that's how many digits you need to express your answer to the right of the decimal point. This is only a technique that is used when working with logarithms. In this next example, they're asking you to find the pOH. Remember the new equation I introduced to you a few minutes ago? pOH plus pH equals 14. Since they're giving me a pH of 4, all I need to do is figure out what the pOH is by subtracting 4 on both sides. That will then give me a pOH equal to 10. In this next example, I'm given the hydrogen ion concentration, and I need to find the hydroxide ion concentration. There is a couple of ways to do this. The first way would be to go back to that original equation where we said 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14 molarity squared was equal to the hydrogen concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration. In this case right here, we would take the value of 1 times 10 to the negative ninth, plug it into the equation, and solve for the hydroxide ion concentration. In order to do that, I would divide both sides by 1 times 10 to the ninth. 
And the great thing about these simple numbers that we're working with right now is that we really don't need a calculator. The hydroxide ion concentration, 1 divided by 1, is 1. When we're dividing two numbers in scientific notation, we subtract the exponents from each other. So negative 14 minus negative 9 would give me 1.0 times 10 to the negative fifth is my answer. There is a second way to do this problem, and even though it looks like a lot more work, people tend to go this route uh, once they get comfortable with these equations. Given a hydrogen ion concentration of 1 times 10 to the negative 9, we can then pop it into the equation, pH is equal to negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, and that will give us a pH of 9. We can then use this next equation, POH plus pH equals 14, to get a POH of 5. With the final equation of popping in the 5 as the negative POH and coming up with the answer of 1 times 10 to the negative fifth. It's your decision on which way you want to do the problem. Just make sure you pick the way that gets you the right answer. In this last example, it says what is the pH if the concentration of the hydroxide ion is 1 times 10 to the negative 7th? We need to be very careful and understand that pH is the power of the hydrogen and you've been given hydroxide ion concentration. If we use the equation pOH is equal to the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration, we can substitute in the numbers. You will find out that the answer comes out to 7.00. Using the equation pH plus pOH equals 14 will then allow you to realize that if my pOH is 7, my pH will also have to be 7 in order for this equation to work out. Okay. If you had used pH is equal to the negative log of the OH, Okay, you would find that you are not going to get the right answer because these do not match. So be very careful about the equation that you pick. When you're solving for pH, you must use the equation that shows the hydrogen ion. If you're solving for pOH, you must use the equation that solves for the hydroxide ion. We'll do a lot more practice in class, but this will get you started. See you then.